My brothers and sisters, recently my wife Barbara had back surgery and could not lift, twist, or bend. Consequent, consequently, I've done more lifting, twisting, and bending than ever before. And it's, and it's made me more appreciative of what women, and especially you mothers, do every day in our homes. While women live in homes under many different circumstances, married, single, widowed, or divorced, some with children and some without, all are beloved of God, and He has a plan for His righteous daughters to receive the highest blessings of eternity. This afternoon, I want to focus my remarks primarily on mothers, particularly young mothers. As a young father, I learned the demanding role of motherhood. I served as a counselor and then as a bishop for a period of ten years. During that time, we were blessed with six of our seven children. Barbara was often worn out by the time I got home Sunday evening. She tried to explain what it was like to sit on the back row in sacrament meeting with our young family. Then the day came I was released. After sitting on the stand for ten years, I was now sitting with my family on the back row. The ward singing mothers were providing the music, and I found myself sitting alone with our six children. I have never been so busy in my whole life. I had the hand puppets going on both hands, and that wasn't working too well. The Cheerios got away from me, and that was embarrassing. And the coloring books didn't seem to entertain as well as they should. As I struggled with the children through the meeting, I looked up at Barbara, and she was watching me and smiling. <laughs> I learned for myself to more fully appreciate what all of you dear mothers do so well and so faithfully. A generation later, as a grandfather, I have watched the sacrifices my daughters have made in rearing their children. And now, still another generation later, I am watching with awe the pressures on my granddaughters as they guide their children in this busy and demanding world. After observing and empathizing with three generations of mothers and thinking of my own dear mother, I surely know that there is no role in life more essential and more eternal than that of motherhood. There is no one perfect way to be a good mother. Each situation is unique. Each has different challenges, different skills and different abilities, and certainly different children. The choice is different and unique for each mother in each family. Many are able to be full-time moms, at least during the most formative years of their children's lives, and many others would like to be. Some may have to work part or full-time. Some may work at home. Some may divide their lives into periods of home and family and work. What matters is that a mother loves her children deeply and in keeping with the devotion she has for God and her husband, prioritizes them above all else. I'm impressed by countless mothers who have learned how important it is to focus on the things that can only be done in a, per a particular season of life. If a child lives with parents for 18 or 19 years, that span is only one-fourth of a parent's life. And the most formative time of all, the years in the child's life, represents less than one-tenth of their normal life when they're little children. It's crucial to focus on the children for the short time we have them with us. 
and to seek with the help of the Lord to teach them all we can before they leave our homes. This eternally important work falls to mothers and fathers as equal partners. I'm grateful that today many fathers are more involved in the lives of their children. But I believe that the instincts and the intense nurturing involvement of mothers with their children will always be major to their well-being. In the words of the Proclamation on the Family, <clears throat> mothers are primarily responsible for the nurture of their children. We need to remember that the full commitment of motherhood and of putting children first can be difficult. Through my own four-generation experience in our family and through discussions with young mothers of children throughout the church, I know something of a mother's emotions that accompany her commitment to be at home with her young children. There are moments of great joy and incredible fulfillment, but there are also moments of a sense of inadequacy monotony, frustration. Mothers may feel they receive little or no appreciation for the, cert for the choice they have made. Sometimes even husbands seem to have no idea of the demands upon their wives. As a church, we have enormous respect and gratitude to you mothers of young children. We want you to be happy and successful in your families and to have the validation and the support you need and deserve. 